إن الحمد لله إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا ما يهد الله فلا مذل له وما يذل فلا هادي له أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسول صلى الله عليه وسلم أما بعد وقال عز وجل بعد أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم يا أيها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحدة وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تسألون به والأرحام إن الله كان عليكم رقيبا قال أيضا يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون صدق الله العظيم وقال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم والذي نفسي بيدي لا تدخلوا الجنة حتى تكمن حتى تكمنوا ولا تكمنوا حتى تحابوا Once Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was sitting with companions and he was relating a qissa from the past a story of the past there was a man a believer who was leaving one village and he was walking to visit his brother in the next village and from the hadith he says it's quite a distance and this man was walking, not riding, he was walking. So then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent an angel in the form of a human being. And the angel came and asked this man, where are you going? He said, I'm going to visit my brother. Listen carefully. He said, I'm going to listen my, to visit my brother. Then the angel asked him, have you done him any favor? Meaning, did you do any job for him so that you're going to collect your money, your salary, your wages? The angel want to know for sure what the reason why he's visiting his brother why he's walking this long distance just to visit his brother then he says no there's no business involved no transaction no job no salary no wages he said then for why are you visiting your brother he says i'm visiting my brother because i love my brother for the sake of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Ajib. Look at the answer he gave. I love my brother for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That is why I'm visiting him. On hearing this, the angel said to him, he thought it was a man, he says, I am a messenger from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, meaning an angel. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent me to tell you that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves you because you love your brother. Huh? That Allah loves you because you love your brother. Now many of us do not understand this word love for Allah and love for your brother. It's a very deep meaning my dear brothers and sisters. Khutbah is not enough to mention the fadail and the virtue in Islam for having in our hearts love for each other for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, Walladhi nafsi biyadihi. Listen to this hadith. And there are very, very few hadiths. And this hadith is in Sahih Muslim. There are very, very few hadiths in the entire history of hadith. Where Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam start by saying, Walladhi nafsi biyadi. He's taking an oath 
He is swearing by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's not an ordinary hadith. Before he mentions what he has to say, he first says, Walladhi nafsi biyadi. This means what comes after, we need to pay attention. Why did Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam just did not just mention what he have to say? Why did he say, I swear, I took an oath. I swear by the one in whose hands in my life. And who is that? Allah. He swear by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. La tadkhuloon al jannah. You will not enter Jannah. Listen to this carefully. This is a very strong hadith. And who is speaking to? He is not speaking to non-Muslims. He is not speaking to the Jews and Christians. He is not speaking to the idol worshippers. He is talking to the believers. Me and you. La tadkhuloon Jannah. You will not enter Jannah. Hatta took him until you believe. Believe in what have iman. That means after the advent of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, there is no other religion that is accepted in the eyes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala except Islam. No one will enter Jannah without Iman. You have to get Iman. One of the first qualifications. One of the first things Allah will separate on the day of Yawm al Qiyamah are two groups of people, one with Iman and one without Iman, and the group will go. Without Iman, they will have different Hisab. The people with Iman will have different Hisab. So, those that there will be two groups, there's not a medium group, a middle group. Either you have Iman or you don't have Iman. So, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is saying, that you will not enter Iman. No one will enter Jannah. No one is allowed to enter Jannah until you have Iman. Until you believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Until you believe in Tawheed. In La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah. Jannah is forbidden for you until you have Iman. And what he says next is very important. And that is what is our, our emphasis on today. لا تدخلون الجنة حتى تكمل ولا تكمل حتى تحاكم and you do not believe until you love each other for Allah's sake until this heart loves everyone with Iman now it's very important it's a question mark in our hearts. There are different levels of love in Islam. Number one, the highest level is love for Allah and love for Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, without doubt. Then love for our parents, second in line. Just below Allah and Rasul comes our parents, mothers and fathers. Then third in line comes family ties, children, aunts, uncle, whatever it is. Then after that comes what? Ukhuwa Bainam. Bainam, Muslim. The love between people who have Iman. And there are some cases where Love for those who have Iman supersedes love of family. In Islam, if you have family members who are not Muslim, who are not Muslims, your brother in Iman, your brother in faith, has more, you have to get more love for him than them. They come, my brother in Iman comes first. That tells you. That Iman, a person who possesses Iman, has certain, uh, yani, we have certain rights over them. We have certain rights of the people who possess this quality of Iman, who are Muslims, who are believers. 
and this does not have this is these qualities this love we're talking about it doesn't come with condition I want us to understand this I am not allowed to hate a Muslim brother because he's committing sin I am not allowed to hate a Muslim brother because he's not praying Salat understand this carefully I must love my Muslim brother so long as he possesses Iman so long he has Iman in his heart is demanding of me from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam from the deen of Islam that I must show this man love or for the sisters they must show each other love this is something missing in our community my dear brothers and sisters we have too much hatred among ourselves too much dislike among ourselves based on based on nationality <laughs> based on skin color based on languages based on level in the community whether those who are affluent people whether those who are not affluent people those who are famous people those who are recognized in the community we pick and choose whom we want to love that is against sharia that is against islam huh? in our hearts there is a defect in our heart and until we cleanse our heart from those qualities we will not achieve anything in deen because we are so divided based on where we came from different things our hearts does not have the love we are supposed to love we have companions of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam if you want to look an example for love look at the love between the muhajir and the ansar the muhajirin are the people who migrated from Mecca and came to Medina the ansars were the people who were living in Medina and all of us know the story that incident of love have never been exemplified in the history again there is no point in history after that happened it was ever found again where a brother an ansar in medina had to take one brother and not one brother his entire family into his home into his life and share everything half whatever he possessed that never happened in the history of Islam Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam saying if you want that to happen then follow the hadith then follow the hadith have love for your brother show love to each other and he says I will and the hadith continue at the bottom I will advise you of something if you do it will help you increase your love for each other and he says what this what is it there Rasulullah he says Afshu salama by spread salam between yourselves spread salam give salam between yourself to whom you know and whom you do not know ah this is important because we pick and choose who we want to give salam to when we come to the masjid when we go to any function we pick and choose who we go to give salam to that means our heart have defects we still have dislike in our hearts and Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says our iman is not complete until we love everyone and if our iman is not 
complete, then Jannah is forbidden for us. لا تدخل جنة حتى تكبر ولا تكبر حتى تحبر You will not enter Jannah until you believe and you will not believe and you will not have Iman until you love each other Meaning the criteria You cannot say I have Iman and you don't talk to people You dislike so and so You have hate in your heart for so and so You cannot claim that I have Iman I'm a person of Iman. I'm a good Muslim. But then you have all these lists of people whom you don't talk to, who you don't like, you know. I'm a good Muslim, but this guy is not. I don't like to be with him. Hmm. It's very important, my dear. This is not something we have choice. We are not allowed to choose who we think is good. To love them and to like them. It's not the case. It is not in our hands that I must choose. We are allowed to choose our friends. That's a different level. But in terms of love for the entire um, for those who have Iman, there is no condition. Because friends are something of a higher level. Among the believers, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says If I had to choose a friend, I would choose Abu Bakr So even Abu Bakr was not considered a friend of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam He was a sahab, he was a He was a companion, he was a sahab He was from among the companions He says if I had to choose a friend, I would choose Abu Bakr Very close, the closest person to Rasulullah in this worldly life was Abu Bakr and uh, we all know that anywhere you will see him you will see both of them like many of us here in the masjid when someone you look in the masjid you will see two people together that's your close friend somebody who you confide in somebody who you tell your secrets somebody who you really tell anything somebody who always help you Whenever you're conditioned, he will always come and visit you. That's a friend. But I'm talking about the entire majma, the entire community that we live in. We do not have choices of the people we love. So long as someone possesses Iman, and they have Iman in their hearts, it's very important. My dear brothers and sisters, do you know one of the things one of the rewards, one of the benefits when Allah says I, when he says to the angel inform him, tell him I love him because he loves his brother when Allah says he loves you because of that quality that you have of loving each other Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says He called Jibreel alayhi salam And he says, oh Jibreel, I love so and so Then love so and so Then Jibreel loves so Then announce to the heavens, the entire heavens The entire heavens Jibreel will make kalan Allah loves so and so Then you must love so and so Then he will make kalan on the earth The entire earth O oh, dwellers of the earth, jinnat and insan, Allah loves so and so, then you love so and so. And then Allah will put the seed of love in your heart for that person. Because Allah loves that person. It is not an ordinary thing when Allah loves you. The benefits and the reward and the fadail and the virtues. I will say one of them. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on the day of Yawm al Qiyamah. Allah will make an alana. Ayn al Mutahabuna fillah. We are the people who used to love each other for the sake of Allah in this world. On the day of Qiyamah, Allah will call them. Special announcement. Imagine how you will feel. 
when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will call you in the gathering of trillions and billions of people we are the people who love each other for the sake of Allah Allah will call them then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give them shade under the shade of the arsh of Allah on a day when there will be no shade except the shade of Allah our next benefit is that they will have special seats you know when you travel you have economy you have business first class but these people will be in first class sometimes when you exit the plane you look at the the business class is very luxurious national. you can lie you can sit you can walk. you wish one day you travel like that well the same thing will happen when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give these people a seat is not a normal seat it's like a member of Noor ah. this seat will have Noor not an ordinary Noor they will be VIP ah. because of what? one quality they love each other for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala they love each other for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala if you want to be one of those people and we know the hadith there are seven people on the day of Yom Al-Qiyam only seven people only seven people my Ustad always say at least try to be in one of those seven qualities if you can make all seven be in one at least you guarantee the shade of Allah on the day of Yom Al-Qiyam one of the seven people are guaranteed to be under the shade of Allah on the day of Yom Al-Qiyam. One of those people are the people who love each other for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we all know the rest. A person who frequent the masjid for the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we continue. Try to be in those certain qualities. Then you're guaranteed a shade on the day of Yom Al-Qiyam on a day when there will be no shade except the shade of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala my dear brothers and sisters try to remove from our hearts hatred for each other dislike for each other because you might be observing all the tenets of Islam you know we heard so many ahadith that the the woman who took her shoe and give the dog water to quench the animal thirst and because of that kindness Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive her sins and grant her jannah one good deed all our life we are asked and we are told to do good deeds but wallahi on the day of yawm al qiyamah Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala we look for that one good deed do we have that one good deed that we can say you know what this deed I hope will take me to Jannah in Jannah do you have that one ask yourself that question The man who was traveling and the tree fell and that was the only pathway for the entire village to use. There was no pathway. Imam Nawi says this man spent three days and three nights because they, in those days there was no chainsaw. He had a, an axe or a sword. How long would it take to clear a huge massive tree? on a road not one day you know now he says it took this man three days and three nights and he cleared the road so that people will walk people can get access in and out from the village and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loved that act so much 
that Allah forgive that man's sins and grant them to Allah. Because that man only did that for the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He didn't clear the road and go back to the village and said, everyone have to come together and give me money. No, he didn't go back to the village and say, you know what, I've done you a favor. I've cleared the road from this big tree. Go and see for yourself. Pay me, everyone must come together and pay me. No, he didn't say that. Fi sabirullah. For the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The same way, there is one quality that will take many of us to Jannah. The same man. Listen to this carefully. Listen to this carefully. Because we strive very hard in this life for Allah's forgiveness. We wake up for tahajjud. We fast in Ramadan. We pray five times. We give sadaqat. We give zakat. We are kind people. We are loving people. All of us, we are competing. We are competing to gain them and Allah's forgiveness and Allah's mercy. The same way you take one quality to enter Jannah, even though we do all of these things, one quality will prevent us from entering into Jannah. I want us to understand this. You will fast, we will pray, we will read Quran, we will give zakat, we will go for hajj, we will go for umrah. But in our hearts we have a hatred for each other. And we die with that hatred in our hearts. Not one thing Allah will do with you. No forgiveness for us. Huh? But I prayed. I was a good Muslim. I'm always in the masjid. I'm always with Jumu'ah. I'm a kind man. One quality. Hatred for each other. Dislike for each other. لا تدخلوا الجنة حتى تؤمنوا ولا تؤمنوا حتى تحبوا You will not enter Jannah until you have Iman and you will not have Iman complete Iman, right Iman until you love each other for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala remove all those hatred in our hearts for each other and replace it with love for each other Let us Try very hard to check ourselves who are the people whom I am not right with in this world. Who are the people I have a problem with? It's affecting my relationship with someone. Maybe if I reach out to that person yeah, and I fix the relationship between me and that person, maybe there is so much there will be so much barakat in my life, so much blessing Allah will give me. Huh? And then I don't have to get this shadow and this doubt in my mind that will Allah forgive me if I die? Or will Allah have mercy upon me? Or will Allah give me Jannah? Because you die well, where in your heart you have no ill feeling of no one. You have no bad feeling of no one. You dislike no one in this life. Even though he's your enemy, you don't dislike him. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam never hate his enemy. And we all know many stories in the beginning of Islam. How much love he showed the people who were against him. Ah. Be like Rasulullah Open your hearts. Remove hatred. Ah. Replace it with love. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us tawfiq inshaAllah. Aqul li kawli hadha wa astaghfirullah li wa lakum fastaghfiru inna huwa ghafur rahim. الحمد لله الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا مولانا محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وعلى آله وأصحابه المعين إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلم تسليما اللهم صل على محمد وعلى محمد كما صليت على إبراهيم وعلى إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد وبارك على محمد وعلى محمد كما باركت على إبراهيم وعلى إبراهيم في العالمين إنك حميد مجيد إن الله يعمر بالعدل والإحسان وإيتاء ذي القربى وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغض يعيذكم لعلكم تذكرون واذكروا الله يذكركم ولا ذكر الله أكبر أقيم الصلاة